So we continue with uh, unit five, uh, which uh, is uh, the market where we are looking at demand and supply. We are now in session five. My name is Elias. So in this video, I want to take you through the welfare side of the market where we will analyze the consumer and the producer surplus as well as the total surplus. Okay, so let's start by looking at welfare economics. So market equilibrium reflects the way market allocate scarce resources or issues of invisible hand. Now, you should note that uh, in a market or uh, in a society, resources are limited, whereas our wants are unlimited. It is this problem that forces us to make choices. Now, in a market, we make choices such as how, how many commodities we will get at a given price as consumers, or how many units we are going to supply at a given price as the firm. And we also decide on what resources we will use in the production of certain commodities that we will sell to the society. Now, with this, then it means that whether the market alloca uh, allocation is desirable or not, can only be addressed by the issues of welfare economics, which we can define as the study of how the allocation of resources affect economic well-being. Now, buyers and sellers receive benefit from benefits from taking part in the market. For the buyers, by participating in the market, they get the consumer surplus, that is the difference between what they are willing to pay and what they actually pay in the market. If price is set below what they were willing to pay, it means the difference between the two prices will give them the benefit or this consumer surplus. In the same way, the sellers will also get a surplus between, uh, which is the difference between what they were willing to release the commodity to the market and what they actually get from the market. As such, Let's begin by first uh, describing consumer surplus, which is uh, the gain for the consumer. So consumer surplus is the difference between what the consumers are willing to pay for the commodities and what they actually pay. If uh, you consider a simple illustration, uh, suppose that we have this demand curve and the equilibrium price is this part here. If John Banda was willing to pay this uh, price here, it means that the difference between what he was willing to pay and what he actually pays gives him the surplus. And if we also have Mary, who is willing to pay this much but ends up pay paying this much, it means this gives Mary the surplus. And if we have all the consumers in the market who are willing to pay above the equilibrium price and those who actually pay the actual price, then the gap between the demand curve and the equilibrium price, which forms this triangle here, uh, gives us the consumer surplus. So uh, willingness to pay is basically the maximum amount that a buyer would pay for a good. If I'm willing to pay 40,000 kwacha and then uh, the commodity for a, an item is only 30,000 kwacha, it means my, willing to, my willingness to pay is 40,000 kwacha, which is the maximum amount that I am willing to pay to obtain a, an item. Therefore, it is a measure of how much the buyers value the good or service. How much uh, interest, I mean, uh, uh, how much the, the, the consumers would value an item will be reflected by the amount they are willing to release just to obtain that item. And therefore, the area below the demand curve and the price which may, is used to measure the equilibrium price, suppose that we were in, uh, in the equilibrium position, would be the measure for the consumer surplus in the market. 
and in a graphical illustration with price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis and our demand curve which is downward sloping let's define our uh, our price at p1 and quantity at uh, q1 now you will notice that the demand curve is uh, meeting the uh, this point here let's call this point point a and that our equilibrium point, uh, I mean, our price P1 is meeting the vertical axis at this point. Let's call that point B. And uh, if we extend this line to identify how many units will be demanded at that price, we can have a point which we'll call point C. Therefore, the area ABC is what we call the consumer surplus or the uh, difference between what the consumers are willing to pay and what they actually pay. So the demand curve reflects the consumer's willingness to pay. And any, any price which will be below will be showing the surplus that accrues to the consumers. Okay, so now let's have uh, this illustration. Suppose now that uh, quantity uh, price of a commodity reduces, what will happen in the market in terms of the surplus? So with our initial description where we had uh, P1 as the price and uh, that we had ABC defining the consumer surplus, which we now call the initial consumer surplus. If the price of a commodity reduces down to some price, uh, say P2, you will realize that according to the law of demand, the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded, holding other factors constant. Which means that even those now who could not afford at a price of P1 will now be able to buy the commodity and therefore join the market. With this, we need to look at what, uh, uh, what uh, uh, surplus will accrue to the new uh, uh, consumers in the market and the incumbent uh, consumers. With that, we see that the area B, C, D and E will define the new consumer surplus that will accrue to the uh, old consumers, so that will be the additional consumer surplus to the initial consumers who are in the market. And then those who've just joined the uh, market will get this triangle CEF and this becomes the consumer surplus to the new consumers in the market. Okay, we can also look at the producer surplus, which is uh, the difference between what the uh, suppliers are willing to accept as payment for a commodity and what they actually receive from the market. Now, you will note that this is the amount a seller is paid for a good minus the seller's cost. So anything uh, below where the supply curve starts, uh, cuts the vertical axis and going up shows how much the, uh, the supplier is willing to accept uh, for a commodity. And therefore, the triangle above uh, between the equilibrium uh, point or let's just say the, between the price which is set in the market and the supply curve gives us uh, the producer surplus. And this is a measure of the benefits which accrue to the sellers for participating in the market. So with price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis, and we recall from the law of supply that our supply curve is upward sloping, then it means that if we have a price P1 and the quantity Q1 and then with areas defining A, B and C forming this triangle, then the difference between the demand curve here, I mean supply curve here and the price line gives us the uh, producer surplus, meaning this area here, ABC, is the producer surplus. And in the same way, Remember that if price goes up according to the law of supply, then there will be an increase in quantity supplied holding all other factors constant. If we assume that price goes up to a P2, it means that we will have new firms which will join the market to supply the commodity. To the firms who are joining the market, they have seen potential to make profit and therefore they will try and reallocate resources which were used for the production of other items 
to this item which has now gained popularity on the market. And as such, we will note that the area B, C, D, and E will be the new surplus which will accrue to the initial producers in the market. Therefore, this area is the additional producer surplus to the incumbent producers. And the area CEF will be the surplus which will accrue to the new firms who are just joining the market. And there, the total surplus, uh, total producer surplus, will be the area A, D, F after a price change increases to P2. Okay, so now we can now look at the total surplus. Now, total surplus is basically the uh, summation of the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. With the supply uh, curve and the demand curve, with and the equilibrium point being point E, uh, where we define equilibrium price and uh, the equilibrium quantity, the area above uh, this price, remember, is what we called the consumer surplus, and the area below the equilibrium price but above the supply curve becomes our producer surplus. Meaning that given the consumer surplus and the producer surplus, the whole of this area becomes the total surplus uh, on the market. We can now look at uh, efficiency in the market. So we should first recall, uh, I mean, first uh, take note of the three things that we get out of the market or observe from the market, especially in a free market economy. The first thing is that the free markets allocate the supply of goods to the buyers who value them most, uh, the most as measured by their willingness to pay. So those who are willing to pay are the ones who get most of the products that are supplied on the market. And from the producer's side, the free market allocates the demand for goods to the uh, firms or sellers who can produce them at a least cost. So those who are willing to, uh, who are able to produce at a least cost are likely to get the large share of the market. And finally, free market produces the quantity of goods that maximize the sum of consumer and producer surplus. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, please send an email to moawelias at gmail.com. I will see you in session six.